So it's day two on the Faroe Islands, and our rapidly depleted bank accounts meant that it was time to stop eating out and buy some groceries. And with our camera bags brimmed full of cheap and stodgy sandwiches, we headed back out to some splendiferous scenery to find some new compositions. Well, I'm at yet another one of my favourite locations on the Faroe Islands, and I'm absolutely fascinated by the shape of that island in the distance. And the light is pretty crap right now, but what I'm doing is I'm composition hunting. So I've come down to this beach where there's these amazing rock formations that kind of look like those basalt columns that you get at the Giant's Causeway in Northern Ireland, except these are all warped and twisted and gnarly, which I like. So those are kind of cool, but when I get close to them, I have to get very low down. And so I lose this area of water, this space that separates those from the island in the distance. And, and I want to keep that separation because if I get too low, it all kind of clumps together as one mass and that doesn't quite work in my composition. So I'm looking around for things to put in front of that and I spotted this over here. I don't know if you can see this, but there's a little spit there with some white water that kind of, the, the, the surf kind of covers it and then falls down kind of like a waterfall. It creates, there, there you go, it creates these lovely white streaks and shapes and it's almost pointing directly at the island over there. So my plan is, and I won't know until I get down there, is to get right close to it, shoot vertical, and fill the bottom half of the frame with that rock and the water action, and then with the top half of the frame, and using a bit of distortion, make this peak seem even more pointy with a super wide angle lens, but not really feature that much sky. So let's go down and see if it works. The Faroe Islands are full of hidden gems that most people just drive right by, but if you're willing to tackle some steep hills and the meadow muffins left by the sheep, you'll often be rewarded with some very photo-worthy scenery and you'll end up with thighs like steel girders. So I made it down onto this beach and I found this lovely composition that I'm working on. You can see the, the island in the background and this cool water that's pouring over these rocks. The problem that I've got is I want around about a quarter of a second shutter speed so I can get a little bit of blur. I, you know me, I like to get like one sixth, one tenth of a second to get a bit of action, but I also like to take that extra shot where I've got a bit of blur. And it is so bright right now that I'm just not gonna get that unless I put an ND on. So I'm gonna look in my bag. I really hope that I brought that um, dark circular polarizer that I had at home. Let's check. Okay, so let's see if I got that uh, dark circular polarizer. Whoa. 82 millimeter, six stop ND filter. Let's get that strapped on. Ooh, shiny. Put the old one back. Okay, let's see if I can make this work. So what I'm having to do with this shot is kind of riding the shutter to try and get the perfect timing. Now, a cable release or a remote shutter would obviously be better because then there wouldn't be any shutter shot, but this is what I'm working with. So what I began with, I focused on the uh, islands in the background and I got those shots of the background and I bracketed those with dynamic range. And then I changed my focus on these rocks in the foreground with an aperture of f8 because that is super sharp on this lens. And basically, I don't want a two second timer on and I don't have my remote shutter, so to get the timing right, I'm just riding that shutter and I'm trying to hit the shutter when the waves come in and, and then as they kind of get sucked out and create those streaks. And I think I've already got a few shots that I think are gonna be pretty much perfect. And I'm shooting at about half of a second. And that six stop circular polarizer front, front breakthrough gave me that shutter speed that I needed. And now I think I want some slightly faster ones, maybe a six or a third of a second and that'll freeze some of those splashes that you see. Well, not totally freeze them, but give them a less of a blur and a bit more of a streak. And those rocks there, like just that moment there, when that comes in, that's what I'm after now that I've got my streaky ones. So it's a case of compositing background shots with foreground shots that have different shutter speeds. But I think if I add some light, the light's kind of drab. 
but I think this is a good composition and with a bit of light the sun sets over there and gives this some gorgeous side light that might be oh that was a good one it might be an absolutely killer shot with the right light So here's the shot and as I mentioned there with some nice side light during a setting sun I reckon this could be a rather juicy shot and that's something that I'd encourage you to do even if there's no good light to speak of don't let that prevent you from hunting for fascinating compositions because once you've got those compositions in your back pocket well then you'll know exactly where you need to be when the good light comes and that preparedness is what's really going to improve your landscape photography you know my, my trouble with with these wilderness poos is i just i can't get comfy on these rocks and i, I wondered if what you do when you're out in the wilderness and, and you answer the call of nature is if you build yourself like a little stone throne to use what do you do well, usually I just find a, like a natural one like this, you know, like a recliner. Oh, let's have a... You dig your little pit. Yeah. You, you know, you just find a place where you can spread your butt cheeks. just let it rip, you know? <laughs> you got to make sure that you cover it up, though, and, and, and uh, dispose of the toilet paper appropriately. Really so do you put your uh, wiped up uh, shit tickets under a rock? depends if it's a really dry environment then you should uh, you should actually burn it set fire to it yes because it'll never it'll never it'll just desiccate oh right but you should usually you should uh, you know like dig a little pit <laughs> brilliant now before I get trolled by do-gooders just bear in mind that was a general conversation about bush nuggets we didn't actually make a deposit on that beach but when you spend as much time as we do in the wilderness it's something you just have to deal with our next shooting location was what I affectionately call Switchback Alley high up in the mountain passes of Esteroy, which is the second largest island in the Faroes. Now, as a photography instructor, I have many responsibilities, and one of those is to perfectly demonstrate to my workshop participants the safest and most elegant way to navigate the often highly challenging trails to some of our shoots. And in this instance, we had to climb a 100-foot ladder where one wrong move could mean a brutally soft landing in quite literally mud and I opted to demonstrate the popular wobble and plant technique which is often favoured by beginners. Uncle Grumpy decided to showcase a more advanced method of crossing this death defying chasm of calamity. He's using the more fluid technique known as the Klingon and this is the high level of expertise that you can expect when you join us in the Faroe Islands on next year's workshop. Clearly worth every penny. So right now we are recovering from a very expensive lunch. I would say the most expensive lunch I ever had and it wasn't that fancy but we had a massive food coma after eating that. So now we need to burn off at least 3,000 calories. If you know me, you'll know I don't really enjoy hiking, but I do it because I think that there's always a good shot at the end. And even though the actual percentage of success is pretty, pretty low, maybe 10% of the time, you still do it on the hope that it'll all work out. But like I just said, we, we could do with a bit of exercise. I've probably piled on about 10 pounds in the last two weeks but we've been in the UK having lots and lots of curries chocolates and desserts so even though I'm hurting a little bit I need this I need it badly and so I pulled up my big boy pants took some deep breaths and had a quick survey of the valley where the weather was looking rather interesting Believe it or not, it's actually snowing right now. Oh, it's kind of a mixture between snow and hail. And uh, we got a, a warning on the vehicle that it was under three degrees Celsius. So surprisingly cold for the nicest month of the year here in the Faroe Islands. But I'm not complaining because this is a chance of getting some of that dynamic light. Oh my God, I'm so out of shape. 
I'm basically asphyxiated by my own girth. If anyone can write a book for photographers, like a guide on how to eat healthily whilst traveling, especially in countries like the US or the UK where the food tends to be somewhat rich and heavy, I'd buy that right now. I'd buy your book. I'd pay a premium for it because working on 10% lung capacity is pretty miserable. Look at Uncle Grumpy just flying. He has no such problems as me. I think it's time for some life changes. This, this can't continue. In spite of my self-induced misery, my spirits lifted when I took in the majestic view of the valley below. But before I could even set up a shot, the light had vanished quicker than that fresh cream apple turnover that I'd scarfed at lunchtime. Well, as often happens in the Faroe Islands, as soon as you get to the spot that you want to shoot, the light has completely changed. But it's probably going to change back, so we're going to stick around, find some compositions. There's so much foreground here we can work with, and just play the waiting game, hope for some more light. Oh, and did I mention the light in the Faroe Islands? Well, when the light is good, it's really something to behold, and it makes landscape photography there an absolute joy. It very much reminds me of the type of light that you might see in Scotland, especially with those towering green wedges of immensity. You know, it occurs to me that if the granite mountains of Banff National Park had a love child with the Scottish Highland, this would be their sumptuous progeny. My God, I'm poetic sometimes. Now, if you're a follower of Uncle Grumpy's channel, you'll know that he shoots more selfies than the average teenage girl, whereas I chose a far more suitable model for this grand vista. What I love about this shot is that to me, it shows that light that I was talking about earlier. It's so very typical of the Faroe Islands because in one shot, you can get that rich dappled sunlight on the mountains while it's underneath a dark blanket of slate gray clouds. And the sheer scale and depth of these mountain landscapes, that's what keeps me coming back for more. Even if I have to put up with a second winter as the snow begins to fall in the last days of May. So we've got perfect light over there in the background and over in this direction it's snowing <laughs> and there's some pretty big flakes dropping down and, and that is that is the kind of light that is spectacular when you get that contrast between awful weather and lovely weather in that direction and like an incantation the words awful weather were perfectly timed. No sooner had the utterance passed my lips and the storm descended upon us like an icy blanket. Mother Nature had decided that summer wasn't coming out to play and neither were our cameras. But despite the grim weather and the stark reality of my pathetic level of fitness, we'd still had a productive day with a few good shots in the bag. And I even managed to capture a quick and easy handheld shot of a rainbow. Oh, <laughs> it's Christmas! I thought, I thought we'd left the snow behind in Banff. I thought we said goodbye to the snow. This is uh, the Faroe summer. You get everything. Four seasons in one day. Four seasons in one day. Uncle had a bit of an episode last night. Was it last night or this morning? Yeah, so uh, I went into the store and I, uh, I grabbed this juice and I thought it was uh, grape juice. It was actually prune juice. So I drank it anyway, and uh, well, I paid the consequences. Yeah, we, we paid the consequences in the vehicle as well. I had diarrhea all night. It was really good cleansing though. I feel really cleansed. It was a cleanse. It was a cheap cleanse. It was a $4 <laughs> cleanse. Did, uh, did Grumpton Airways take flight on this location? Yes, Grumpton Airways did take flight, and I did a couple of circles. Yeah. And then uh, I was doing a time, la time lapse, and that guy stepped right in front of my camera. 
<laughs> Sometimes though, that actually can look kind of cool. No, his head was in my camera. Oh, just his head? And luckily it didn't take a frame during that period, so... All oh, right. Did you tell him off? I did. I was quite angry. It was about 10 minutes in. <laughs> what did he say? He goes, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry! Did you give him the full no, Grump Master no, Flash I, I, treatment? You know what? He's, you know, it was an honest mistake. All right, so let's uh, let's dig into our piggy banks and maybe go for a, a shandy somewhere, eh? Yeah. All right, let's pack up and f*** All right. So back down the hill of steepness, we descended, where I said goodbye to the cute little cows that were after our savoury snacks. Oh, and talking of snacks, I clearly recalled passing a kebab shop on the way to this last shoot and as everyone knows kebabs are really good if you're trying to lose weight mm. Mm. how's your boiled egg it's all right how's your kebab oh. there's nothing quite like a dirty stinking kebab after a cold snowy shoot mm. well i would have bought one but Ran out of money. Oh, because of those uh, $53 breakfasts. Yeah, and the uh, $13 beers. Yeah. I've been cut off my visa, so you're going to cover me? Um, yeah, I could cover you. Yeah. It's going to cost you. <laughs> <laughs> one more, uh, one more boiled egg. These are really small chickens. <laughs> <laughs> the truth is, they're potatoes. We couldn't find any pickled eggs, but... These are potatoes. I thought they were eggs. Oh, I'm almost done with stinking kebab and I'm loving every... Oh, you're eating crackers, I'm sorry. I'm on a diet. A boiled egg and beer diet with prune juice. <laughs> Heart-burning tinfoil. Really am. I can see that jacket's getting quite tight for you these days, isn't it? I resemble that remark. Oh. It tastes kind of. Uh, 